In this movie, we're going to take a quick tour of the interface. Now, there's two things I want to point out. First, your screen may look a little bit different than mine because I'm recording this at a lower screen resolution than probably you have. So you may see more audio tracks and the icons may be a little bit smaller and you can see more of them, for instance, in the lower left-hand side. Another reason things may look a little bit different is if you've been playing around with Adobe Premiere and using it to edit a show, you may have changed the screen layout. Well, I can't change the resolution of my screen and still have you be able to understand and view it, but we can put us all in the same starting point. And to do that, you're going to go up to Window, Workspace, Editing should be checked, and then you're going to go ahead and reset your current workspace to the default for editing. And on the Macintosh, it's Option Shift Zero. Simply say yes to this dialog box, and your screen will reset to the default layout. Now, I was already at the default layout, so there was no change in my screen, but yours might have updated. Now, let's go ahead and take a tour of the interface. In the upper left hand corner is the source monitor, and that's where you're going to be placing clips and deciding what part of the clip goes into your show and marking in and out points. Going around clockwise is the program monitor on the right side. This is where your final show will appear. So if you do any kind of graphics or color correction or effects, you'll see them on top of your clips. Directly below that is the timeline, and you can have one or more sequences in this area. Now a timeline and a sequence, I'll be using those terms almost interchangeably, it's basically a graphical view of your show from beginning to end. Now, I'm going to go ahead and with this window selected, press the backslash key, and it will actually allow me to view my entire timeline. So here I basically see a graphical representation, of the beginning, middle, and end of my program. We'll go into a lot more detail about this in later lessons. Finishing out the four main windows is in the lower left is your project file. And this is where you access all of the media that you'll use to cut together your program. There are also two smaller windows that you're going to take advantage of. On the far right side are audio meters. If I go ahead and play the program, and I'll do this by simply pressing the space bar, you'll see the audio levels rise and fall based upon the volume of the speaker and the music. And I'm so excited to welcome you to our test kitchen. In between the timeline and the project panes, is a really thin window that has your toolbar. Now these are all the different tools that you can use when cutting your show. Now if you've used a word processor, you're already familiar with tools that when you click on them allow you to do different things in a program. In this case, it's everything from selecting a clip, to cutting a clip, to moving a clip around your timeline. Again, we'll look at each of these buttons in more detail as we need them throughout the course. Now, you may have noticed that in each of these four primary panes, there are some additional tabs, such as a media browser, info about your clips, an effects drop down pane. And if I go up to the upper level, you can see effects controls, an audio clip mixer, and so on. What's more important to notice is this thin bar. If you're working on a lower resolution screen and everything is kind of squeezed together, you may run out of space for all of these tabs. If you grab this bar and you slide it right or left, you can actually see all of the tabs that would normally be in that pane. Now, we're going to explore most of these throughout the course, so I'm not going to go into what each one of these tabs do. Finally, switching back to the source window, as well as you can see in the program window, there is a series of buttons below your video. These buttons are much like the buttons you would find on your DVD player or even your streaming box. You can hit play, Fast forward, rewind, jump to the beginning of the show, the end of the show, as well as additional editing tools such as marking in and out points. And now you should have an overall sense for the default interface for Premiere Pro.